afternoon. I would like to thank my family, my CSG sisters, my friends from Northeast Ohio, and here in my hometown of Columbus for joining me today as I announce my candidacy for Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of Ohio. I'm especially pleased that Governor Strickland and Chairman Redford can be with us today. In support of my candidacy, I join their commitment in achieving balance on the Ohio Supreme Court, where seven Republicans and not one Democrat serves. I'm also pleased uh, to announce that I have my first labor union endorsement and thank Jim Dvorak, fellow Georgian, uh, and the Ohio Administrative District Council of the Bricklayers and Allied Craft Workers. That means a lot to me because my great-grandfather was a bricklayer. In my travels around the state as president of the Ohio State Bar Association and now as a state appellate court judge, I heard so often that people want to have confidence again in their courts. They want a fair, open, and balanced justice system in which to resolve their disputes and protect their rights. The public wants judges who will follow the Constitution and the law, not the dictates of special interests. The public wants an impartial judge, not a legislator in a black robe. Ohioans just want to be confident that the judges hearing their cases have not decided the case before that case reaches their desk. Ohioans just want their courts to be open to all, regardless of their financial status, and to offer a level playing field upon which to resolve the dispute. This is especially important for our state's highest court, with a few exceptions. Uh, that court is not required to hear every appeal, as my court is at the state at the intermediate court level. They're not required to hear every appeal. Only those cases of public or great general interest or involving constitutional questions. Lawyers and judges are taught from the very first day of law school not only to avoid improprieties, but to avoid that which will create an appearance of impropriety, a perception of impropriety. Whether perceived or real, Ohioans believe that the level scales of lady justice have been tipped in one direction, and judicial outcomes are questioned because of the appearance of sizable campaign contributions from the business and insurance industries, and they believe that that directly affects the outcome of decisions. This perception is further reinforced when Ohioans learn that not one Democrat sits on the Ohio Supreme Court. If elected, I intend to see to it that a stronger recusal rule is put back on the table as a part of an effort to restore confidence and balance in our court. But in order to restore confidence and balance, we must do more, and it begins with the composition of the court itself. As Ohio's Chief Justice recently explained to Joe Hallett of the Columbus Dispatch, and I'll, I'll quote him here because I don't want to misquote the Chief, the idea of a multiple court judge certainly is that the process includes people of different backgrounds, different philosophies, different views on issues, and the perception of an all-Republican court is that we don't have that. Ironically, a Republican Chief Justice succinctly explained why I made the decision to seek election to Ohio's highest court. I offer to the people of Ohio a, that different background, a background that's forged in the crucible of 25 years representing working families, children at risk, and small business owners. My practice in the trenches of both state and federal court took me to all levels of the justice system, from small claims courts to the Ohio Supreme Court. I'm not a career elected official, nor did I rely on those politically well connected to achieve my positions either as state bar president or as an appellate court judge. Rather, I relied on individuals who believed in independent thought, fidelity to the Constitution and precedent, and my share and 
these people also shared my passion for the law and for our court system and for court reform to help me obtain the positions where I can make a difference. And my leadership at the state and national level in issues of administration of justice and legal reform prompted chief justices in Ohio from both political parties to appoint me to serve on a number of Supreme Court commissions and task forces. As a judge, I recognize the, enorm the enormous impact that our decisions have on people's lives. My family taught me the value of hard work, dedication to your life's calling, and perseverance. My teachers taught me the importance of critical and independent thought, and to recognize that we are citizens of a greater whole, with an obligation to improve it with our words and our acts and our deeds and to embrace learning as a lifelong endeavor with real value. My church taught me the importance of faith, social justice, and charity. And the most influential people in my life taught me that my reach should always exceed my grasp. As a child, I was raised in two worlds. We stand not far from a bridge, just west of us on Broad Street over the side of the river. That bridge literally and figuratively bridged my two worlds. Each day after school at Columbus School for Girls, I would hop on the Coda bus and travel over that bridge to the hilltop. The hilltop was where my grandparents lived, where my parents' ran businesses. Across that bridge, I traveled from a world that I shared with many friends in Bexley, whose parents had names, uh, had buildings named after them. And across that bridge, I traveled to see my friends whose parents worked the third shift at Fisher Body or at International Harvester. The daily sacrifices that I observed on one side of my bridge had a profound impact on how I valued the advantages provided to me on the other side of that bridge. They say that to those who much is given, much is expected in return, and that is why I want to serve those who live on both sides of my bridge as a justice on the Supreme Court of Ohio. 